Since 1999, the lantern floating ceremony has become a Memorial Day tradition in Honolulu, Hawaii. Presented by the Shinyo and Buddhist Order of Japan, the event brings together thousands of people, regardless of differences in faith or cultural traditions, with a common purpose of expressing messages of gratitude and remembrance to those who've passed. Shinyo and Foundation has invited various groups to experience lantern floating nearly every year. These groups have included grantees, religious studies scholars, and interfaith leaders, all invited with the goal of sharing this unique spiritual event while learning from them their individual perspectives. In 2015, the foundation invited a group of graduate students and faculty from Hartford Seminary and the Seattle University School of Theology and Ministry. Though diverse in their areas of study, the students are on career paths where they will often face those who are coping with death and loss. These future chaplains and pastoral or family therapists and caregivers were invited to participate in the lantern floating to reaffirm their paths and with the hope that they would gain new perspectives on death and dying to help them provide comfort to others for many years to come. I greatly value the opportunity to be here and to have a discussion. The following day, a reflection session was held to give each of the participants a chance to share their thoughts about the experience. As we were walking towards the Alamana beach, seeing so many people walking together, um, it reminded me of another uh, religious ritual we have in Islam called the pilgrimage to Mecca, where people are walking towards the Kaaba and it's like um, a wave of people. That was a good feeling to feel like we were coming together, walking towards one direction. Everyone was very gracious, very kind, uh, helping us through the process, giving us our bags, showing us to a table, having pens and everything available for us to start filling out the sheets of our lantern. The idea of communicating with someone who I lost that was so precious and dear to my life was hard. It was a real challenge. How do I, what do I say to her? What do I reflect to her? How much do I miss her? So I just chose to use the words, I love you and I miss you and thank them for being in my life. as I drew my lantern. Um, something I often do when I pray is I, I draw or I write um, just whatever comes up. And so as I settled into the experience, I found myself being able to, um, to create my lantern in prayer, and that was really special for me. I didn't write any of what I thought I would. I ended up thinking about the two populations that I, I volunteer with are, are nursing home residents and um, youth in foster care. And I thought about them and a way to honor the lives of those who, who can't make a lantern um, or who don't have family to remember them. our lanterns and walk down the hill in through the gate to our seats I looked back and saw the crowd the massive amount of people there was just overwhelming when I came to the lantern floating ceremony yesterday I positioned myself as a receiver, what would I receive from this ceremony? And the moment of encounter for me was when Her Holiness rang the bell. With sharp eyes. 
at that moment I was received. As people began to light their lanterns and hold them, the reflection and the lights were stunning. It was just beautiful. But then there was a moment there where it was, became my turn. Transfixed, I think, is the word I'd like to use. And as you can see, the tear flows now. It flowed then. As I really understood the moment and what it would mean for me. I think what, what struck me the most was um, as I honored my loved ones and the people around me honored theirs, it was almost like we were honoring each other's. Um, even though they didn't know family or my friends that had passed away and I didn't know theirs. My parents are older than me and it's the most logical conclusion that I'll be burying all of them. And um, that then meant when I let go of my lantern, um, how much I look forward to giving them a hug, honoring them now because one day they'll be gone. I don't remember much of what I felt when my grandfather died because I didn't have time to feel very much, but the one thing I know I felt was alone, um, just very alone. And in the lantern ceremony, um, we're not alone. And so now I, I hope to work in hospice and Christian counseling. And the lantern ceremony relates to, to both as I see it because in hospice I can can help my patients understand that they're not alone. As chaplains, we're very challenged to let go of the people that we accompany as they, as they are dying. And I felt by launching the lantern, uh, I could also set those souls and spirits back to their creator so that I can be um, Hold them in my heart, but be prepared to minister to more people that will be inevitably coming my way. We see all these individual lanterns on the ground, but if um, from above it probably looks like just one guiding light, you know, one guiding light, one unified light heading towards the horizon. And I thought that was very powerful how different walks of life, different languages, different cultures, and different beliefs could share in such an experience. For me, I just feel like I'll hold this as an example of how to help others deal with loss and um, hopefully continue to bring the you know, spirits of their loved ones forward in, their, in the life that they lead. If the goal is peace, I saw that yesterday. I know for myself, I experienced a peace within myself. And I saw peace amongst people from many different backgrounds, standing together in one place, sharing one experience. I think that if someone experiences peace within oneself, that that will transcend one's own experience, but will be shared with others, and not just in that moment with others, but that that experience and that sense of peace will be brought away from yesterday's event. And so that goal of peace, I think that was achieved yesterday. Uh, coming here, one of my 
uh, great interest was to see similarities between Buddhism and Islam in particular and the Abrahamic traditions in general. And I've seen a lot of things that are similar and I think that uh, it's important to emphasize that. I welcome the opportunity to participate in more of these types of dialogues and I thank you all for giving us the opportunity to be here and to uh, engage with all of you and teaching us about the valuable uh, tradition of Buddhism and um, thank you all for inviting us here to Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you.